Welcome to a short tutorial showing how you can create a virtual display at your school's next learning fair. Students can show their inquiry learning with PowerPoint so audiences can independently enjoy the student's learning before they speak with the student or the student can share their learning with others from a distance. By clicking on Topic Display Signs, students can devote whole rooms to topics and subtopics. A virtual fair can be sent on a USB flash drive or through some file sharing file hosting service in the cloud. This could be a viable option for students who cannot present live through video conferencing. A virtual learning fair can also be used in a live setting where the visitor can focus on the content and supplemental video, sound, or graphic elements first before engaging in conversation with the student. Students could potentially see more guests speaking with one while another is using the virtual presentation. The student may want to have a couple of computers available to accommodate more than just one guest. Just before we learn how to build a virtual presentation, we should reflect on a common concern of many teachers. That is helping students use their time wisely without getting lost in the fun elements of technology and not accomplishing so much. We want to balance student engagement with learning in depth. Perhaps some teachers will want the students to conduct all research on paper first before building their virtual learning fair and presenting it. Other teachers may want students to use PowerPoint as the tool to both collect information and build the virtual learning fair before presenting. We want students to spend the majority of their time on research and critical thought and less time on the interesting features of the technology. Perhaps telling students this up front among the criteria on the rubric will help. There will be opportunities during this tutorial to pause the video and collaborate on the ideas presented. Let's start right away. You can see from the thumbnails on the left, this virtual learning fair is simply a deck of slides. These slides are linked by some element or object in the slide. To illustrate this, from current slide, Welcome to my inquiry experience has been linked to slide 2. And there is slide 2. I could link the whole text box to slide 2 or just a single word. In this case, I chose the whole text box. Right clicked, edit hyperlink, place in this document, slide 2, OK, and let's test it. From current slide, welcome to my inquiry experience slide 2. To learn more about linking within PowerPoint, see this YouTube video at the NWT Sharing Knowledge Channel. Let's look at how to create the basics of the virtual room we saw in the slide showing the presentation board, in this case slide 2. I'll start with a blank slide, insert, shapes, rectangle. We'll make this the floor. Notice I have drawing tools highlighted. Format, shape fill. Let's give the floor a texture. I'll choose this one which is called stationary. And then for the ceiling we would uh, go through the same steps except I want to save steps so I'll go control C, copy, control V, paste, and once again, drawing tools, format, shape fill, and uh, I'll make the ceiling white. Let's build walls. Insert, shape, rectangle, let's build a hallway wall, insert, shapes, trapezoid. We need to change the angle of the trapezoid so we'll 
right click that size and position rotate that 90 degrees close and then let's resize this to match our existing wall and to sharpen the angle of this trapezoid we'll just adjust this yellow handle until we have the wall about the way we would like it. We'll select both of these walls. We'll control C or copy it, control V or paste it. Move that over to the other side since we want to mirror these walls. And I'll right click and I'm going to group them just so that as I rotate them they'll rotate together. Size and position. Let's rotate them 180 degrees. Close. Let's place a back wall. Insert shapes. Rectangle. Resize just a little bit. And there's my basic room. Still a bit high here. There we go. We need a table. Insert. Shapes. Trapezoid. Format shape fill gray four legs insert shape rectangle format shape fill gray copy or paste for the back leg let's shorten this select both of the legs and we'll group them. We'll copy and paste them. Underneath format we'll rotate, flip horizontal and toggle them a bit to the right. And there's our table. Let's put a presentation board on our table by going to insert shapes rectangle move it back a bit so we can use some of our tabletop uh, format shape fill white and we'll use two trapezoids for the side panels and rather than draw them from scratch I see we have one in our virtual room so we'll copy and paste that bring that down and let's size it up here to meet the middle panel. Now that's not open enough so let's open up our presentation board a little bit and we'll use the yellow handle to get it to match the center piece. About like that. There we go. And let's shape fill that white as well. Now we'll copy and paste it while it's highlighted and underneath format again drawing tools format we'll rotate it we'll flip it horizontally and there's our presentation board to build topic signs which will become our buttons we'll use trapezoids again insert shapes trapezoid I'll draw a small one here. Drawing tools format. Rotate. We'll turn it once to the right, 90 degrees. Now while the top of the sign looks relatively acceptable, the bottom is a little steep. So we'll edit shape, edit points, and this way I can grab a hold of any particular point of this trapezoid and change the 
the angle, or the length. And that's how we would build all the topic signs on our presentation board. PowerPoint also lets you import media. The student may want to play music at the entrance of the school. Insert. Audio. Audio from a file where I've prepared a music clip. Music. School entrance. At the top, the Audio Tools menu has appeared. Playback. Loop the little clip until uh, a viewer clicks the screen. Play it automatically. Hide the speaker icon during the, the show. And volume, medium will be fine. Let's test it. Slideshow from current slide. And it's working well enough. Let's take a look at some of the setup and media in the treaty room. The chairs are just two small rectangles and lines grouped together and then copied and pasted. There is clip art in PowerPoint under Insert, Clip Art, Search for Chair, and you have all these chair options. Like the topic signs or buttons we saw back on the poster boards, the picture frames are resized trapezoids. To insert a picture into one of the trapezoids, format, shape fill, picture, find your picture, and it inserts it very nicely into the resized trapezoid. Video is being used here on the big screen in the treaty room. I'll just play some. It was captured with a smartphone, sent through email, placed in a video file, and then inserted into my virtual room here. Let me demonstrate. Insert, video, video from file, videos, idle no more, and then I simply resized it to fit on our big screen. Audio, say from interviews with elders or chiefs, can also be captured and sent by a mobile device and used in the same manner as this video. A student may want to record their own narration in a particular room. Choose Slideshow, Record Slideshow, Start Recording from Current Slide, Start Recording. Welcome to the Treaty Room. I pressed Escape to end the recording. I'll double click on the thumbnail. You can see that we have the speaker icon and those settings can be adjusted just as we did with the music at the entrance of the school. And let's test it. Welcome to the Treaty Room. Also you can see a screenshot of an avatar welcoming you and introducing the video. This is an alternative way to create narration. The avatar was built at Vokey.com, shared through a link and hyperlink to this text box. Let's test it. Welcome to the Treaty Room. In this video, you will see Treaty people responding to government decisions that affect their rights. Explore the maps and images to learn more about treaties with Aboriginal peoples in Canada. To learn more about how to record your narration, analysis, and commentary, see the YouTube video Digital Storytelling with PowerPoint at the NWT Sharing Knowledge Channel. Students need to provide a bibliography. Some teachers may require students to further show evidence they use different types of media. To learn more about virtual rooms or museums and how they can be used in schools, search Christy Keeler in Educational Virtual Museums. She is one source that's done a lot of work in this area. All the best with your virtual learning fair.